Three, two, one. Hey, Internet friends. This is Magic Brad with Synergy Cafe and the Synergy Collaborative and Synergy Lifestyle Academy. And I've got a friend. I think he might be on the east side of the United States. And his name is Stanley. Are you there, Stanley? Hey, how's it going? Yeah, it's going. I'm here. I can't yeah. stop it. <laughs> you can't stop. Nothing stops. It keeps so going. You, it this, what? When I chatted with you before, you said something about virtual, that you're not even real. No, no. I'm a fictional character. Um, You're a fictional character. You know, yeah, yeah. I'm an actual fictional character come to life. You know, and you know, we fictional characters, you know, we we are very useful in the in the big scheme of things. You know, we actually make, you know, the you know, we give meaning to the world. So I like to be I'm very happy in my fictional it's very versatile. You know, I've got yeah. a friend that's a magician and he's a character. He actually uh is a cartoon a, a, a human cartoon character where an anvil falls on his head and uh, a safe falls on him and he gets squished flat and he's got all sorts of weird yeah, sounds. He's a, he's a, he's looks. A, Sylvester the Jester, his name is. <laughs> love the name, yeah. But I love that, you know, we can like have these things happen to us, like, you know, and we just come back in the next episode. I mean, that's like the beauty of it. You know, you don't have to worry, you know, when you're fictional. Exactly. Right? Yeah, you get squished by an anvil or run over by a bus, like uh, the Roadrunner and that coyote. He gets hit a lot, but he comes back every week. Oh yeah, that one's a wonderful one. Yeah, I think you know, there's so much meaning in that. That's like so existential. You know, it really gives you this deep existential milieu of understanding of the universe. I, I love Roadrunner. You know, where did, where did Stanley come from? Was he like conceived or hatched or? Was it a birthing process? Where's well, Stanley came out of the mind of a guy named Kit Crash. Um, he's some idiot. You don't want to know him. We kind of keep him in the backside. He's like a writer. And, um, and he writes for like television and stuff. But he, he works he for you. Write, yeah, he works for me. He's my employee. Okay. He's just like some, you know, hack writer. And he came up with this Stanley idea. And so uh, and originally, I think it was Steve Buscemi who was like going to play the part. But, you know, we decided that, you know, it took so long, you know, because he's a, he's a big, famous guy. So he's got a schedule. And so it, it came to that Stanley would play himself. He has his own. He, he's coming out of the fictional universe into the world and he can just be his own being now. So I play myself. And you notice that, you know, I, we, we kind of take the talk from, you know, the Buscemi brothers who we, yeah, who we admire. <laughs> I don't know who they are. Who, who are the Buscemi brothers? Oh, they're these really good actors. They, they act in TV and movies and stuff. So, um, so Stanley was actually based on some of them, you know. Um, and a little bit of, let's see, what else did Stanley? Stanley also comes autobiographically from that guy Kit Crash. I mean, I think some of his his own relationships with women and with life, you know, uh, ended up in the story of Stanley. So is Stanley married? No, actually, Stanley was in a domestic partnership, and he the in the story. If you pay pay, you know, if you're listening to the podcast, which is more like a a story podcast, but it's something else. It's like it's a new art form pretending to be a podcast. Um, and I wouldn't, I mean, it's a terrible thing for your ears. I mean, it's really, you don't want to, I wouldn't, you know, wouldn't let, uh, you know, I wouldn't advise it to, on anyone. But Can the thing you use is, filters or something? Does he what? Could you yeah, use you filters need on your ears or something? Actually, what we recommend is a sense of humor. You Can buy you a sense it? of humor and you can handle it a little better. Right, so if you buy the sense of humor, the pod, it's it's a little bit more palatable. I mean, and maybe we should also give ear cleaners. But this is a sense of humor. You can buy them on the street, but actually, we recommend you buy the official one from the website because you don't know if part. they're cut clean or not. Exactly, you don't know. But these sense of humors are really good. They they kind of have glittery things in them, and you put them on your head, and you just shower yourself with it, and you can almost handle anything. They, they that makes a lot of sense because I've heard people say, you have no sense of humor, but now you exactly. can buy a sense of humor. You can buy it. Yeah. All you need is to go out and buy a sense of humor and you, you're fine. 
I mean, you know, I know that some people can't afford it. So we have this, we might get, we might start a foundation for that, you know? Um, so people can, you know, for like war veterans and stuff. To get, like a you know, humor scholarship? Yeah, yeah, maybe, yeah. We, we're thinking about that. That's kind of in the long run, the big picture. I mean, I'm, I'm kind of like selling it for the guy, the uncanny auto. He's the guy who actually sold it to me. And I don't know where he got it from. Maybe from some... Is there only one? Shit. Huh? Is there only one? Only one you auto? Said you said he sold it to you. So there's only one. Oh, no, no. He sells bags and bags of these things. Oh, there's lots of them. Lots okay. of them. Yeah. Lots but, of senses of humor. Yeah, but the, the source... The sauce, the secret sauce is coming through a pirate ship somewhere, you know, off the, you know, in the East River. I mean, that pirate ship sails in the East River. And I think that's where, you know, people are getting it from there. If that's the real deal, if it comes from that one. I think um, there's a load of, you know, if you, if you listen to the podcast, there's loads of characters. But one of the characters is Annabelle, who was my, you know, my living partner. But we broke it off because she didn't like my sense of humor, actually. Uh, so she, well, she could exchange it for another one, couldn't she? If she keeps her receipt, you can get a different sense of humor. Oh, of course. Yeah, I guess that's true. But I think she thought I was a little too arrogant and uh, not to her taste, you know, of what she wanted in a relationship because I wasn't, you know, I was always being funny. And, you know, you always read in the internet and stuff that being funny is the key to a good relationship, but sometimes it isn't. I think she should maybe buy a sense of humor. Well, she's, she's, I don't know why she doesn't, she doesn't do things. So it's like, she's like, she's, uh, alcohol is her only thing. So it's like, she doesn't want anything else. So. Oh, that okay. will, uh, that'll stifle a sense of humor. Right. Drunks think they're funny, but they're not. <laughs> exactly. Isn't that so? Yeah. <laughs> so how old is Stanley? Oh, well, Stanley is about, I would say he's about 30 years old. I, I actually don't know, because I'm a fictional character, I don't really age. So, you know, it's like 10 Flexible. years from now, I want to write a story. It's like the comic books, you know, they write the story and I'm still the same age, you know. Does Dagwood change his age and, you know. That's cool. I mean, yeah, they don't change the age. I mean, this is the beauty of it. And maybe I do. I mean, sometimes they make them, you know, it depends on the life situation that they want the character to be in, you know, and maybe, you know, I, you know, how do you know, know how many like, candles oh, to put on the cake? Maybe I die and come back. What? How do you know how many candles to put on the cake? Well, we do that. Well, you can do whatever you want, you know, it's like maybe today I want to have 30 candles. Maybe tomorrow I want to have 10, you know, I could put as many as I want. The freedom is mind boggling. Uh -huh. Yeah. Makes sense. It doesn't even have to be a cake. Do no, it doesn't. Pie for all. No, it'd be a pie. Do you know what? For it could be a big giant explosive, right? And I could blow up, and I'll be back in the next episode. Just like that, almost. Yeah. We Please. can make up some plot hole, and we could say that you know I just went to the world of unfinished plots and stories, and I came back. You know, we have this like thing where we have this crumpled paper. I wish I had an example, and in the, we actually can move in different times and dimensions through this crumpled paper because that's the unfinished scripts and when you open the unfinished scripts you can go into another dimension and that's like one of the beautiful things that happens in the spell cast is that so that kind of like the uh, time space continuum kind of thing where you could take the yeah. one corner of the paper and the other corner of the paper and you could put them together and they're in the same time even though they're in exactly yeah it just turns it the other way, you know, this kind of like Mobius strip. Yeah. yeah. I mean, but the thing about it is that because of that, I mean, there's an episode where um, I am tortured by a Nazi and the way we get out of it is through, uh, through a piece of crumpled paper that's floating in the air. So it's like, there's some pretty amazing things that happen during the, during the episode of my life because there's all these interesting things that can happen. You, you can know, buy a sense of humor and that could be a fun thing, I guess. Oh, it is. Actually, through the whole thing, the sense of humor really helps out a lot. You know, it just keeps everything. Keep, actually, I think I ran out at one point and it was a real problem because I had to tell the world's funniest joke in this episode. And because this, there was this, uh, it was like a, a woman, her name is Madel, Madam Ticklebreath. 
and she was torturing me for a joke, the world's funniest joke. And I couldn't find it for the life of me. I didn't know what it was because I lost my sense of humor. I, I ran out. And so I was in a, a real, you know, pickle at that point. And then somehow at, I found the crumpled paper and the crumpled paper got me out of the situation. So it's kind of, you know, things like this happen during the spellcast. Um, so the sense of humor, do, 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 do they come in different sizes? Well, they come in different colors. So this is a green one. In the first episode where we introduced this, it's purple. So I had a purple bag in the beginning. And then, um, but, I noticed that, you know, they do come in different colors to fit different personalities. You know, it's like, you know, it's like you, it, it needs to, it's like a mood ring. If you get the right one, it'll fit your personality and you, it'll help you develop the sense of humor in the right direction for you, you know? So like some people have a dry sense of humor. Other people have a wacky I, sense of humor. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes you need it to keep it dry, you know, and sometimes it gets a really wacky. And then the wacky sense of humor is really useful in a lot of situations. That's where, you know, absurd sense of humor, when you're in the surreal landscape and that we live in today, we live in one of the most absurd worlds. Reality is really absurd already, right? How do you get more absurd than where we are today, right? But we do, we do, because that's the only way you can escape the absurdity of the absurdity is to be more absurd, right? And Makes the, sense sense. Of humor, <laughs> the absurd sense of humor is what's going to help you through all this absurdity that's going on. The sense of humor is pretty an interesting, pretty interesting concept that uh, I'm trying to wrap my head around it because different people have different senses of humor. And sometimes people say things that are funny, but they're not funny. They're actually hurtful. But that's really on the person that got hurt. I think that was Stanley's problem with Annabelle. Um, but yeah, I mean, but one of the things that we're learning is we're learning about all these other kinds of sense of humor. Sometimes what it is is people have, they don't know what they have, you know? And that's kind of the moral of the story is you don't know what you actually have, you know, until you lose it a lot of times. And um, so there's a lot of thinking about how in the show itself, I mean, that idiot who writes the show, uh, Kid Crash, he's he's got this idealism, this weird idealism of this, new kind of humor you know that he's trying to develop which is kind of like more like a self-reflective humor where we make fun of ourselves so we can see the world you what, know? what do you do for work do you are you, are you just uh, a, a Mom, humorous kind of guy what are you just a humorous kind of guy for work you I mean you gotta well, pay rent, no, i mean I, I i i am put into this program and that's what i do for my work i'm a stand-up comedian actually so because I got the sense of humor, I started doing stand-up comedy. And this is what helps me do the stand-up comedy, you know, you know, in places like Laughing Buddha and all this stuff, uh, rock, you know, danger fields and all that. But what's um but the but my the writer is a writer. He writes for television and all kinds of stuff. But I think it's uh, you know, it's up to him to really talk about that. He's got, um, you know, he's a, he's a professional writer and, and a chump and, uh, you know. Professional chump? chump? <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he's not funny at all. In the real life, this guy is a total boring douchebag, you know. Could he, could um, he be funny if he had a, if he bought a sense of humor? Yeah, yeah. I tr yeah, I mean, people have been trying to give him one for late ages, but he just is like, you know, he thinks that he doesn't need one. You know, he just writes. He thinks he's funny. That's the thing. Is that a lot of people who are not funny, they think they're funny. And the people right. who are really funny, they don't know they're funny. That's the beauty of it, right? Could somebody like um, just like stumble on a sense of humor? They're walking down the sidewalk. All of a sudden, they see this little thing on the sidewalk, and they pick it up, and all of a sudden, they, they just have a sense of humor. Yeah, they could. They know how to use it. They know how to use it. You got to use it correctly. It could be a dangerous thing if you don't know how to use it. I suppose um, you could be like going to a funeral and then uh, you reach in your pocket and go, oh, look, I got a sense of humor. And you start cracking jokes and being funny at a funeral and there's a lot of... Hurt. Well, you can get you into fights. But the thing is, you can also use it for self-defense too, if used correctly. Yeah, yeah. I mean, 
I've used my sense of humor as self-defense and I got out of a lot of fights out of that, you know, because, you know, you, you, you snap the sense of humor at the right time and nobody's going to bother you. They, they're going to laugh and they're going right. to, you know, but if you do it in the wrong way, this is the thing. Sense of humor is a really tricky thing. It, it could know? escalate it too, couldn't it? It can escalate it. Yeah, yeah. You can really get into deep trouble with the sense of humor. You know, and so there's even a manual available for the sense of humor. Um, it's kind of a photo comic style manual, and you can also get that via the spellcast. So there's a lot of different kind of, you know, products that the spellcast is like pushing on you, but it's all good for you. You know, it's like, you know, the sense of humor. I think there's even like, um, there's even like earplugs, you know, in case you, you you know, the that podcast gets foisted upon you. You know, and you don't want to hear that thing. You know, it's going to really make you a, go mad. You know, you're going to be an insane poison if you listen to that. Can't so, you turn it off? Where, where does the podcast gonna, get broadcast? Your head. It's going to revolve in your head. You know, like, oh. you, know, this, you know, those things that stay in your head, you know, those earworms. There's a lot of earworms in it, you know. So it it's, might stick in your head. So you got to do something, you know. It's not, you know. It's a very unhealthy thing for people to put the ear, put a, you know, put in their ears. So, um, you know, so I'm just telling you, whatever you do, don't go to www.thespellcast.com and don't look for it in Apple Podcasts or in Google Podcasts or any of those things. If you see it, just like move away quickly, like really quick. If you click on it, you're going to end up listening to this stuff, and then you'll listen to more and more because they're really short episodes. It'll take you maybe more like, like less than four hours to listen to the whole thing in a binge. So if I didn't want to go there, what is it that I'm supposed to stay away from? The, how do you spell it? S P. Well, it's actually spelled a little different. Yeah, it's, it's with the T-H-E. It's a the T-H-E-S-P-E-L-C-A-S-T. So there's only one L. And the what reason happened is to the other L. Well, it plays with this idea that it's not just a spell, because all stories are spells, right? Music, poetry, it's all spells, because it all goes into your mind. But it also plays the idea that spell is the joyman word for play. So it's kind of like, or spiel, right? You know, so it's kind of like playing a little bit. It's also wheat um, grains, but it's a, it's about, it's a play cast, because it's a cast of characters. So we're playing with that idea and it's the spell cast so it's a group of people who are a cast of characters who perform these little parts and i'm stanley and annabelle has her own stories going and uh the uncanny auto you know the guy who sold me the spell cast sorry the sense of humor he's got his own stories going too um he's not just a street guy he's like a traveling gypsy vagabond you know who's been on you know, pirate ships and all that. So there's big stories with him. So everyone has their own stories, but we all meet up. And then we have our own individual stories, we meet up, and then we have songs, you know, and dance. As a matter of fact, we dance, even though it's all for your ears, the dance for your ears. We have like sea shanties and local bands. And well, it happens in their head anyways, theater, right? Actors. What? It happens in their head anyways, so you could have people dancing. Right, in yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we got all these like, you know, you know, local actors, Jeffrey Emerson, uh, you know, they're just all, and Elvis Miller, you know, these guys are just local actors who are, you know, I think they're, they, they are just New York people, you know? Yeah. So it sounds like you, like I had this visualization of uh, that dancing in the head and I realized that those earworms are in there and you got the ear plugs in. Now the worms are stuck inside of the head dancing and that's that could be funny if you had a sense of humor yeah it's only funny if you got a sense of humor if the, if the worms are dancing in your head and you don't have a sense of humor my god you'd be like am i going insane is, is something wrong with the world is the world not what i thought it was it does sound really? insane but if you have a sense of humor it's kind of like makes sense that worms are dancing in your head it makes total sense yeah Right. I mean, the thing about it is it would be like you're in a Terry Gilliam animation otherwise, right? You know, the Terry Gilliam and the Monty Python, you know, it's like it's collages of things. Well, yeah. this is actually sound collages. So you get the sound collage of a story and you get the story. It all makes perfect sense. That's the problem is that it's so easy to digest. 
but it's also ex it has something else. It's it's a way of being experimental, but common at the same time. Like it's it's really pop. It's really you know I guess it's like what a lot of good entertainment is. You know, uh, but I'm not saying it's good entertainment. I'm saying it's bad for you. You know, it's like Mad Magazine was bad for you. You know, it's like these things are not good for your head. You know. Um, is it like, sort of uh, addictive? It's almost something that like, you know you're not supposed to have it, so you end up having it? Yeah, yeah. It can end up like that. You know, you might have to go to like special, you know, I think they have special programs where people sit in for, you know, for like spell cast, the spell cast addiction programs that they've been having out there. Like they so, sit I mean, in a circle and they go, hi, my name is Stanley. I'm a work, I'm a humorholic. Yeah. Oh, I, yeah, I know. I mean, I've been actually, I'm, I know that someone else has joined in on that. Uh, I have to see how it went for them because I'm planning to join that pretty soon. Yeah. That sounds pretty in depth. Well, Stanley, this has been kind of fun. It's definitely, I didn't realize that you could actually purchase a sense of humor because that could be helpful when a person, you know, you buy them in bulk and just go walking around and, and spew, like, especially with these protests and all that stuff. If you had pieces oh, yeah, of sense of humor, really you give it away you to do. people and they would quit breaking windows and stuff. They'd start. Well, it's kind of like, what is those guys called? The, um, there was this group in Netherlands or somewhere. You know, they used to give out toilet, they, they used to do these protests in the 60s by giving out toilet paper or being dressed as Santa Claus. You know, they had these things that were funny. Well, I don't that know, might have been like why there was funny. a shortage during the COVID thing, all the toilet paper was gone. Maybe they were giving it away. Oh, yeah. There. Right. That's true. That's where they all went. Yeah. That's where that they all sense. went. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's like a, yeah, what do they call this? Is there Something, a factory that manufactures the sense of humor or do they just kind of come out of nowhere? How do, where do they come from? Well, that's a mystery because they're coming from this pirate ship and uh, on the East River. And I don't know where that pirate ship is getting them from. I don't know where it's manufactured or anything about it or, you know, so it's a very, it's a mystery to me as well. You know, maybe someday we'll find out. Maybe the, maybe that mystery will be solved on the spell cast. It um, might be a good documentary or something when people figure that yeah. out. People are trying to find oh, out where the aliens are and people that right. have psychic powers and all that. Maybe we could uh, but put But you know, all the sense of humor has really come from the same place. Like even when you're not using it, there's some kind of inner sense of humor that is actually that thing, right? So it's all coming from somewhere. So the pirate know, ship like might be a warehouse or something. It could be, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Right. Well, that's fascinating, Stanley. This has been very interesting. I've never uh, experienced, I didn't, I didn't even think of the idea that you could actually purchase a sense of humor. I thought you had to have one. <laughs> well, actually, everyone has purchased it at one time if they have one. They just don't know. They don't remember. Oh, you don't really, you're not born with it. You end up having to acquire one. Well, no, babies sometimes get them too, by accident. If you see a baby laughing, something has happened. Something's gone wrong. Some sense of humor has gotten into the baby food or something. You got to be aware of these things, you know. <laughs> um, but, you know, I don't think humans have them naturally. I mean, think humans are very, you know, we're very serious people and we get into all kinds of arguments over nothing because we don't have the sense of humor and we need it. In this day and age, we need it more than ever. Absolutely. Well, I appreciate you taking the time to share that, uh, your sense of humor with uh, me and my friends here. I'm going to sign this off and beam it up to the universe and put some keywords and hashtags on there. I'll send you a copy of this and, and we'll propagate it out and maybe we'll find out where in the world does that sense of humor come from. That's, yeah, let, yeah, if your audience can help, fine. You know, if you can give us suggestions. You know where you think it's coming from. And they I mean, go to the spellcast.com with one L in spell. Yes, that's it. Perfect. I will link that on there it. so people can find it and then they can uh, go there and they can, if they happen to find sense of humor, because it's possible, I suppose, sense of humor sometimes they don't have owners and they're just on a mm. shelf somewhere. And right. I mean, these things, orphans. these things are floating around sometimes. Actually, the inside of it is, you know, it's, it's, it's actually something the thing inside has a lot of mic, it's like very micro, you know, little bits and pieces of fairy dust and very, you know, so in a sense, they could be floating around. You gotta, you gotta catch in, you have to catch them. It's like the virus, you know, you might be breathing it in, you know, and you'll suddenly feel funny. Happy. You don't know. You'll feel humorous. <laughs> you'll feel humorous. 
and you don't know why, you know? And the thing is, it, it might catch, you know, if you start laughing, someone else will laugh too. And then it's, you know, it does, it does move. It's like a virus. Oh, so even it. if you do it, other people are going to start having the sense of humor but too. Just not, the person. masks will not stop it though. Oh, I don't know. Maybe the masks are stopping it. That's why people are so serious. I'm just wondering. But um, yeah. Oh, let's, uh, let's debate that. We'll figure that out. Okay. Well, Stanley, I appreciate you taking the time to be on Synergy Cafe. I'm going to sign this off and beam it up to the universe and I will send you a copy. And That would be wonderful. We'll explore that. It's really nice talking to you. Brad, Thank you. And uh, looking forward. Yeah. Take care.